Hello, my name is Henry Emfrey. This is a Copper Cube game development tutorial. This tutorial will cover some basic programming aspects in Copper Cube. Now, Copper Cube has a visual programming style setup where it uses this visual programming style to make things happen in the game. For example, let's take this cube here. You go to behaviors, click on this plus, and then you might go down to maybe behavior triggered by events. And then you might go down to when a key is pressed, do something. You may click on that. And then you might use this A button to make your cube move or something. And that's how the visual programming works in Copper Cube. And there are tutorials all over the web that shows people how to do their programming in that way. But in this tutorial is for individuals that prefer the more traditional text style programming. And for this is for people who prefer to handwrite their code. Sometimes the visual style programming takes a little bit of time to do. And some people might not want to go through doing that same visual style again and again and again just to rewrite some things in their games and do that same method from game to game. Thus, with this text style way of programming, everything could already be written and the code could be reusable from game to game. Or, and things can be more instant. You know, before you even write your game, uh, you can already have the code written already. Also, this tutorial is to show some of the basics on how coding works in Copper Cube. Now, I do not consider myself a genius programmer. I consider myself still a beginner that just knows a few things, I think. And I make these tutorials for myself too sometimes in case I need to go back and watch them. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started okay so first thing we're going to do is we're going to use this cube as a floor this cube is going to be like a landmark so that you can see our player walking when we make it walk okay so that's big enough for our purposes so next thing I'm going to do is bring in an animated mesh so I right click go to insert import an animated mesh and then I'm going to choose this particular animation right here I made a tutorial about how I uh, read this character and put all its animations together and whatnot I use this same character in various tutorials so the link is below okay so I'm going to click on this animated mesh and I'm going to rename it Henry so anyway, I got this idle, walking, and punch. I'm just going to leave it on idle. Okay, so let's make this floor a little bigger. Okay, okay so now we have our character set up. The character is named Henry. So now we'll go to coding. Okay, so here's the code that I wrote. And I wrote this code before... I started this tutorial and what I'm gonna do now is is I'm gonna go to file I'm gonna go to save as and I'm gonna name this file uh, test.js and I'm gonna save that I'm gonna do the same thing here I'm gonna go to file inside the editor I'm gonna go to save as and I'm gonna name this test as well because the names have to match uh, before the period the name has to match in a second and while you're watching this you can also read the comments if you want to uh, that can help you you know speed up through this tutorial if you need to so first I made my idle animation if you go to Henry and go go to attributes uh, and then uh, scroll down to animations and go to edit 
you'll see that my idle is 4040 and that's also so these are notes my idle is 4040 uh, my walking is 330 to 350 as you can see here too and my punch is 430 to 580 so that's how I did that it's just to mark where these different animations are on that one animation film strip that I made and again I explained all of that in a another tutorial whose link is below the first thing that I did in this program is I just set the key events this is just something that you should just copy down because uh, I had to register if the key is uh, pressed down or if the key is pressed up so in this function here um, 37 is left 39 is right 38 is up 40 is down and 65 is the A key. So it says if the left key, right key, up key, down key, or A key is not pressed, is not pressed, then perform the idle animation. I made up a variable to use in this text editor, and then I used the command CCB get scene node from name, and I used the name uh, Henry because uh, that's the name of this character and I put that in parentheses and quotation marks and remember what you write here in this part has to match the exact spelling that you have here or otherwise your whole program won't work okay so that's that part next I'm dealing with the part where the key is pressed down when I, you know when you deal with different functions you're starting over so with this function once again I had to create the uh, variable name in which I use I use the same uh, variable name here and then use the CCB get scene node from name like I did up here and again I, I wrote the name that I used in the editor just like up above this is the exact same thing that I wrote above but I'm just starting over Okay, so this variable name that I created in here uh, stores all this stuff here. Isn't it amazing like how one letter or something or a variable or word can store a whole bunch of stuff in computer programming? You know, I find that amazing. But anyway, okay, so I got my variable name. Now next, I'm going to deal with the position. So I had to create a variable for that too. So I create the name. And once again, uh, use the same variable ccb get scene node property, and then I use my the variable name that I made because that's the object that I'm dealing with, and then I wrote in position. See, position. This is referring to this part. I did the same thing with rotation. I made a f variable for that too, and then, like I say, use the same command. That I used here and here uh, and again I used my the variable name that I created and I used the rotation like here because that's what we're working with and then I, later I created a, um, a, another variable for the players angle and rotation and and this this is just a formula that I did I uh, got off the um, copy key website so you, you can just copy this down but and then last thing that I did was I had to use a command to get the animation to work it is ccb set scene node animation once again I used the variable name that I created above that I used up here and up here because that's the object that we're working with I specified uh, walking you know walking so in essence when the up button is pressed um, the character will um, move and its rotation will be stored and whatever rotation it's on or where however the player is turned that's 
the direction it will go. Okay, so next I'm working with the down button. And I did the same thing down here. I created a variable name, used the command, and then the object's name that's in the way it's spelled in the area. And then uh, I created a variable for the position once again, uh, used the command and name uh, and the position uh, section in this editor once again. And then, uh, like I said, I pretty much did the same thing, but this time it's for the down button. And this is just, once again, it, it takes the way that the player is faced. And if the down button is pressed, it will go in that direction in, in which the player is faced. And then next for the, if the right arrow key is pressed, uh, once again, I used, it, I did the same things for if the right arrow key pressed. But this time is this part is used to turn the player to the right. Maybe there could have been an easier way to do this, uh, you know, you know, instead of recreating a variable over and over again. But it works, so I'm just doing it this way. And then the same thing for the left, uh, same same things. And then the last thing is if the A button is pressed. Um, this makes the uh, punch animation a start. Um, it, it, it's referring to this section right here, animation and punch. See, they're spelled the same way, both in the editor and in the section. Okay, so now that I'm done with this coding part, we'll go back to this editor and, and we gotta create a camera for our player, so I'm gonna left click on the character, right click to get this menu here, and I'm gonna create a camera, third person camera. Okay, it was select, it says select a node, node means object or um, to follow with the camera. I'm gonna select Henry, and I'm just gonna uh, hold the middle mouse button. I'm gonna and then I'm gonna hold the, I'm gonna left hold the left mouse button, and then I'll click the middle mouse button to pan, and select this camera, click move, and I'm gonna move this camera right behind the player, Henry. And then I'm just gonna use the mouse wheel to scroll back, pull this up some, move this arrow. Uh, a little bit to the left again. Hold down the left mouse key to do that. Now let's play. Okay, so now here's our character. Now let's, let's see if we press the up arrow key, he moves up. If we press the down arrow key, he moves back. If we press left, he turns to the left. If we press the right arrow key, he turns to the right. And if you press the A button, he punches. So that's all I want to show you. I just want to show you the basics of how to do animations and control your characters with traditional coding. You know, because some some people like that way. So you can take what you learned in this tutorial and expand on it. Uh, Till next time. Thank you. Bye.